Hello. Hi. Yeah, second go round. It is second go round with the start. True. Had some trouble there. But we're here and we are starting a minivan fan club. Wow. We're doing that this week because both of us happen to have minivans. Dude, I just realized you can be a part of this gang that I'm in uh-huh. uh, with, with my boss at my other job. Uh, we're called the Mini Vandals because we both have minivans. There you go. I have merch. I have a shirt. Would you like one? I'm in. I'll take one. I'm, I'm, All in. Right. I'm a minivan for life. Maybe you make it yourself. That'll be fine. Wait, I'm confused. You have to make it yourself to, uh, to you know, show, oh, the, that, show that you're loyal. Okay. It doesn't okay. just take having a van. No, no, no. I understand that. You have to show your commitment level based on yeah. how far you're willing to go. Not only am I in a cult, this one, by the way, that's Grant. I'm Jake. Well, we are starting a cult. Not only am I in a cult, I'm also in a gang called the Mini Vandals. We roam around town with all the storage space you could possibly want, and that's kind of it. That's fair and reasonable. I can't argue. I will say this. Um, I have gotten, I, I've gotten actually, it was a single question, but it really raised a good point. Um, some of you out there, we, we're, I think this might actually be episode 120. I'm not entirely Who positive. knows at this point? Maybe oh. I'll check on my phone while you're speaking. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely positive. It's either 119 or 120. But we've gotten this far. And uh, I was asked, what kind of cult is it, right? Um, in in a more serious fashion, uh, it is a cult about just nothing. This will be 120. Okay, yes, yeah, see, I was right. I, I guess I can't really believe that this is episode 120 already. No, yeah, we got a lot of them. But um, we we are a cult in the sense um, we we are just a cult of nothing. And yeah, that just, is yeah that we worship nothing. We believe everything, which is Gomex. Yeah, we're the opposite of nihilism. Yeah, uh, mostly just chill out and take it all in, uh, whatever that may be. Yeah, we are nihilism. Okay, that's what we are. We're a nihilism, and not in we're the sense a of, nihilists. Yeah, that that's exactly <laughs> what we are. I love that. All right, cool. But. Oh man, it has been, it has been a week. I want to give a shout out. It is Friday, July 9th. That is David's birthday. Oh shit, Navy boy. Our big homie over there, over your, uh, not quite overseas at the moment, but you know he he was. I don't know where he is now. He moved around a lot. Um, but uh, you know, Heavy D, it's his birthday, so uh, we love him. Give him a happy birthday. Yeah. Um. Next week is Mitch's birthday, so we got we got birthdays coming out the ass right now. It's true, and Mitch isn't here today, so I'll be covering the bananas. That is true. He is uh, actually in the middle of doing some landscaping, and um, yeah, that does not sound like fun. So we're doing this no. instead. No, no. Um, that no, that doesn't make us bad friends because uh, we're not included in the landscaping. It's a uh, it's for a family. It's thing. It's a Mitch know? thing. It's not us. Yeah, it's a Mitch thing. We don't. That, that's a him, that's a him thing by himself. Sure, we're like family, but the the added bonus of that is the fact we don't have to do landscaping. And the thing is, uh, I I would, but when I by the time we heard about it, it was like, oh, you already started, so it's, uh, uh, we don't want to interrupt. You yeah, know? we don't, don't want to fuck the flow. Don't up wait here. up, you know. Don't wait up. <clears throat> we don't want to ruin the flow. I don't um, even have any sunscreen. But we are here this week. We are navigating into the world. Of true crime once again. How about them That's fucking true. apples? And this is a huge guy. Oh yeah, in two senses. Yeah, he was a he was a rotund man, similar to that of uh, the Augustus Gloop, if yeah. you will. If he's you're a, a glooper out there like yeah. me, he's a fatty. Um, but we uh, it's been. I mean, we did Bob Berdella. Was that? That was a while ago, man. That was like uh, like February, March time, I think. Maybe. I think it was like one of the first of the year. Yeah, it was early. It was early. So we did that. Actually, shit, it's already July. That's why. We're more than halfway through the year now. We are moving into the world of true crime, and it, it's been neglected for quite a while, and that would be Mr. J-Dubs himself, John Wayne. Gacy. No, just John. Oh. Uh, I did all the looking up of John Wayne. You know what's funny? I The first thing. That I noticed when I was like researching on this, John Wayne Gacy comes up first uh, before John Wayne. Isn't that fucking crazy? In like the assisted search, that is that's wild. But I will say this: uh, the people that are probably trying to Google John Wayne aren't really old enough 
to utilize Google or aren't young enough to utilize it correctly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think when I think of John Wayne, I think of people like in my grandparents' era. We're going to type out the exact thing, like the full thing they're trying to look up instead of using assisted search. Who, what movie was John Wayne in? I mean, I'm not making fun of you. If that's how you use the internet, you know. What movie was John Wayne in when I was seven? By the way, that was in 1962. Yeah, pretty much. Or something like that. Pretty much. A very long-winded search. And, I mean, Gacy, I don't... I See, this is something... This is kind of a topic in and of itself, and I'm not sure how we could research it, but I would actually like to do an episode on it. Kind of just the overarching interest in true crime... And I feel like it, it's, it, I mean, okay, I feel like we're kind of on the downside of it now, but I would say probably from the 90s, maybe mid-90s up until about even maybe like 2016, it was at like an all-time high. Like, there was quite literally just merchandise with serial killers' faces on it. Yeah, no, I was talking on the uh, other podcast that I do, uh, No Opcast, go listen to that. But uh, I was talking about the the Ted Bundy dildo that yep. made. Mm-hmm. That's just a bone. Pretty it's much, it's just literally a bone, and it's just uh, the Bundy dildo. And yeah, it's like I th- I mean, I'm not Strange. saying that it's not popular because it still is very popular. But oh yeah, they're still making documentaries up the ass. We're we're kind of coming on that downslope of uh, it, it's hard to call it a fad because it's not. It's a research topic that is you know stimulated the minds of plenty. But, We're doing it right now. Yeah, and it it really kind of hit its stride in, I would say, early 2010s. That was when, I mean, it, it, all over YouTube, it was just constant videos of someone covering this, someone covering that, someone yeah. doing this. And then Twitter got a hold of it. They're like, Dahmer's my spirit animal. It's like, yeah. you're a fucking weirdo, but still. You know what's funny? I don't see it. You guys are aware out there, because I've talked about it before. That I use TikTok, right? Like I, I love TikTok. You're a TikToker. I, uh, I, I do love it. Even like any spare time that I truly have, I'll like open it. Like, all right, what's going on on TikTok? This I get very agitated, and I, I shouldn't, but it, it's it just bothers me. Um, there are a lot of people out there that clearly uh, share their thoughts on TikTok, right? And I don't ask me why. But there's always videos of women, or maybe not even women, they're girls. They're like young, probably 15 to 18 or 20. Yeah. And they have these videos. They're always the fucking same. It's like, if your boyfriend idolizes this character, he's a psychopath. It's like the Joker. It's Yeah, it's like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. It's uh, Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. You got, uh, what was his name? The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, yeah. And, like, I, I, you know, I, I, in a way, I understand that because it's like they're not good characters. You can enjoy them, but you probably shouldn't model your personality after them. Yeah, they're fun to watch. You shouldn't probably be in their world, though. Exactly. But the same people that make those videos, those are the ones that in their bio, they're like, Jeffrey Dahmer is my god. Ted Bundy is hot as fuck. So it's like, well,. You're worse because at least half of those people were fictional characters. <laughs> like they're not real people, you know. The Wolf of Wall Street <laughs> it's was, not, but it's not like your boyfriend's a bad person. It's like your boyfriend's a pussy. Yeah. How about how about some real danger? Uh, I know the the Wolf of Wall Street. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I don't know it, the guy exists. He's out there right now because I see him on TikTok once in a while. Um, he's interesting. But I I don't think he quite realizes that nobody fucking cares about him except for the fact that Martin Scorsese made a movie about him. It's really just the movie that people care about. If that never happened, nobody would give a shit about what he had to say. Like, nobody would. And they're like, yeah, that guy's awesome. He skimmed so much money and, like, you know, was rich. Well, he got fucking caught. <laughs> so what a, what a fucking idiot. You know, I mean, I'm not, not saying, even a, not even a good criminal. I can't say he's not like a cool guy. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he is, but uh, he definitely is not a good criminal because he was arrested, and that's a great segue into John Wayne Gacy, who was also not a great criminal, uh, at least near the end there, because uh, you know, spoiler alert, early on uh, he did get caught. Yeah, yeah. That is the case in pretty much 
all of these true crime stories. If he, I mean, if he didn't get caught, he would have some cryptic name like the Zodiac Killer or yeah. Jack the Ripper or some shit. Exactly. So why don't we why don't we just dive right in? Because this is Let's gonna be it. this Let's is gonna be it. a beefy series. We're uh, right now. I mean, I'll just tell you guys straight out. We're we're thinking it'll go two. It's gonna go two for sure. It'll be two for sure, maybe three. But uh, just a testament to how long this might be in this episode right here. Uh, there's gonna be no murder. Yeah, we're no. just gonna be getting into the nitty gritty of this guy. This is pre actual murders. Uh, not particularly pre-crime yeah he he murdered some souls perhaps but uh yeah no he definitely uh and that we're not going to be talking about the murders yet and uh, i know that might upset some of you out there but you got to realize that if you want the full picture and if you want in the grossest possible way to say this you gotta if, mix some colors to make a good painting if you, know? you want those murders to mean something to you you gotta understand this first yeah so let's, so let's go. Fucking dive in. John Wayne Gacy. He was and remains to be one of the most infamous serial killers of all time. He's one of the big three. And that's essentially one of the, the episode three. today. That's so pretty we, much. If <laughs> we did that, how funny would that be? But no, he's he's one of the big three. Bundy, Gacy, and Dahmer oh, are, yeah. are the the top three of these people. They picked up Satan's birthday cake in uh, South Park. There you go. Yeah, it was hilarious. It was like the Three Stooges. But uh, he's most well known for his sheer number of victims, which was at least 33 young men and boys, and his haunting clown persona, Patches, or more commonly known, Pogo, yes. the clown. Um, I'll tell you this. Uh, we, I mean, we, for those fans of the show that actually you know, have listened to a lot of this, we're from the general area. We're not from Chicago, uh, but... For those of you that don't live or like aren't from around this area, uh, I'm sure this happens in other places too. We are in a very weird place in this country because we're part of Indiana, okay? But our part of Indiana, we receive no Indiana news, uh, no updates from it's all Indiana. Chicago. We don't get updates on the Colts. Okay? No, literally everything we get is Chicago. So. Uh, it's kind of a running gag around here. You know, people are like, oh, I'm from Chicago. The only time I've ever actually used that is when I'm on, like, vacation. And somebody will ask because it's like, well... So they need, like, an approximate... It's like no one knows what Merrillville is. Yeah, no one's going to know... Everyone knows what Chicago is. When I pull out, like, oh, I'm from, you know, northwest Indiana, you sound like a tool, you know? So it's like, oh, I'm from the Chicago area, you know? I'm in a... A, va- a far south suburb of Chicago. Well, you could say Gary. Yeah, that's that's true now. That is true. That's yeah, even that's, closer to Chicago. That's a recognizable name. There you go. But um, with that being said, I mean we you know we spent time in Chicago. Jake and I uh, went to school in Chicago. So yeah, you guys know that. We talk about that too much. We spent a lot of time there, and uh, I've met quite a few people that actually. Uh, I mean, not personally, but their family. Uh, you know, had him over for birthday parties and things like that. Yeah, because he was uh, he lived in Norwood Park. Yeah, in he, Norridge, and he was a relatively famous in the underground clown scene, which is not a thing anymore. And you could probably thank him for that because uh, the idea of a Craigslist clown nowadays is definitely not accepted. It's ultimate terrible. But uh, it, it is real. I mean, this is something that. You know, you see it in movies, like, oh, he dressed like a clown. It's like, no, when you're around here, there are the older generation. There's people that actually saw him in person. Were in contact with him, yeah. And, you know, I mean, obviously they didn't know he was a murderer, clearly, but it it stands the test of time. If you're from this area and your family is, chances are somewhere, somewhere along the line, someone you know had some connection to him in some way. It's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, so we're from this area. He's from this area. We got ourselves a hometown boy. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So let's just start from the beginning. Uh, so John Wayne Gacy, he was born on March 17th of 1942 in Chicago, Illinois. Hey, right? I yeah. just said that We were talking name. about that, right? So uh, he was the second child of uh, Stan- uh, John Stanley Gacy and Marion Elaine Robinson. Robinson. Not Robinson. 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 So, uh, yeah, he was the middle child of three that his parents eventually had, and he was the only boy, all right? So he was the middle boy. That's got to be rough. Right? That really does have to be rough. Like, 
I know it's not everywhere, but that middle child syndrome is a thing for sure. Yeah, my parents stopped it too. Yeah, and same we here. Just, yeah, it was, I feel like maybe to avoid that. And it's got to be hard to not only be the middle child, but to be the only boy. Because I'm sure that works in your favor sometimes, but it probably goes against you a lot more often. <laughs> in certain cases, I can see that. But uh, yeah, so he there was three children. He was one of them. He was in the middle. He was the only boy. And the family was of Polish and Danish descent. And the father, John Stanley Gacy, he was a World War One veteran, and he turned into a mechanic when he got back. And he quite uh, literally transformed into one. It's true. Like he was a like wolf. one of those lifts. Yeah, one of those lifts picks up cars. But no, he, he uh, became a mechanic uh, while Marion stayed at home with the kids. So, as one might have guessed, John Wayne Gacy was named after his father's fir- uh, like favorite tough guy actor. G- okay. Guess who it was, Grant. Lee Van Cleef. So close. Damn it. So I'm was not the even going to say it because it's so obvious. John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy. Uh, John he's... Clint Eastwood Gacy. <laughs> John Clark Gable Gacy. Yeah. <laughs> so his dad loved that guy, so he named his kid after him. But John Wayne Gacy could never seem to gain the favorable eye of his father, right? Uh, There's a reason for that, for yeah. sure. Well, a couple of reasons. Sometimes, but, but then a, a lot of the earlier stuff, we'll get into it. We'll oh, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there's ahead of myself a here. A bunch of sides to it. But uh, so John Stanley Gacy was physically and emotionally very abusive. And he was also a raging alcoholic. So all those things uh, made for a bad time for the son. Yeah. You know, you know John Wayne Gacy. It's it, The sad truth is that uh, this is the beginning of most... Most, if not all, true crime stories have yeah. something to do with this. Uh, whether it be a parent, a guardian, something like that. There's some form of abuse, emotional or physical. Yeah, and, and his his dad there. like his dad fucked up the whole family, but it was mostly John. It was uh, his mostly sister, his son. Lorena Bobbitt Gacy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wouldn't that be Chris? Snip, snip, you know. Oh, that'd be gold. But that'd be uh, gold. <laughs> so, uh, so John began. Uh, he he was getting beaten regularly from uh, the age of four. That's when it like really started. He claimed that one of his earliest memories was uh, when he was uh, getting a beating from his father uh, from for screwing up the order of engine parts that his father was working on. And when his mom came in to defend him. His father accused him of being a sissy, a mama's boy, who would probably grow up queer. Okay. Um, he was four years old. This wow. is the first thing he can remember. I mean, again, spoiler alert, but he he kind of hit the hit the nail on the head. He was right, one. but I mean, but that's not, not good. for the right reasons. It ain't he was good. He was, he was using it as a weapon, which is bad. I'm a, I will I will admit this. I'm very shocked. Uh, and almost surprised, I, I can't say pleasantly surprised, but I'm surprised that um, in defense of the situation where the mom steps in to defend little John, uh, the the fact that he didn't turn around and just beat her, that, that surprises me. That really does. That sh- I it's mean, surprising. Yeah. yeah, there was physical abuse like all around, but yeah, when she came to defend him, it was kind of like he had kind of... Uh... He'd worn himself out on the beating scale, and it, it was like, it was oh. over to emotional torment, and then he'd go back to drinking, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty standard for guys like that, yeah, for sure. Pretty much, yeah. The beatings would be like uh, over pretty trivial things, but they were so frequent that when the very serious situation arose in 1949, wherein Gacy was molested by a family friend in his truck, Gacy kept that from his father, fearing that his father would blame him. Uh, resulting in another beating. So he was terrified of these beatings to the point where he kept uh, molestation from him. You see, that's what I, this is kind of like the part to me that's almost the most interesting. I don't know if you guys have ever, I'm sure there's out there, I, I know in a couple of shows they do episodes where they do kind of split screen view and it's like, what if I had made this decision? And then they show like what it would have been like and what it actually yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is kind of that defining point in his life where you wonder how his life might have been different had he talked about this. Yeah. Even if he were to be, you know, abused because of this, maybe that wouldn't have been the case. I mean, no one knows. It didn't happen, but it's like yeah. 
that this truly is like one of those points where he was old enough to make that decision, and that is ultimately the decision that sprouted what he became. Yeah. And he chose not to tell his father multiple times because this was not an isolated incident. Like, this this family friend who molested him in the truck did this multiple times that year. Yeah, and... It was fucked. You, yeah, I mean, that, that's just kind of the sad truth of that is uh, if he knows that you're not going to say anything, they're probably not going to stop. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's just kind of, like, what happens. And, uh, who is that fucked up? It's not good. Yeah, so that's just one example of Gacy's father's abuse uh, being extremely detrimental to his son. And the beatings would often happen for no apparent reason. Uh, Molestation aside, because he didn't know about that. He was just getting beaten anyway. Uh, So once in 1957, one of Gacy's friends recalls being over at the house when Gacy's father came upstairs from the basement, absolutely fucking bombed. He was drunk as shit. And, In any uh, other family, this would be a great story. <laughs> it's like, oh, he just stumbled up the stairs. But no, it's not a great you wanna story. You want to come down here because... and what, you want to get your ass kicked in ping pong, bitch? <laughs> it's like we're playing Mario Kart down here. It's fucking tight. Yeah, that's like a... That's I came like up a, for popcorn. That's like a regular family. <laughs> that's how I'm going to be as a father. Just yeah. like, yeah, you want to see what real Mario Kart's are like, losers? It's like, <laughs> Dad, you're drunk. Like, shut up. I'm a mechanic. Dude, it, shut you, up and play. He so many opportunities to be a good father. He's a mechanic. You can make little go-karts. Real life Super Mario. Yeah. Fucking all this shit. Uh, anyway, so that didn't happen. He came up for it. So, all right, this is a story that Gacy's friend recalls from childhood. His father came up from the uh, basement. He was absolutely fucking bombed. And he just started viciously beating the 15-year-old Gacy, okay? That's crazy. That's and a little too old, because it's at that point... Just, like, in front of his friend. At that point, it's like, as a father... I mean, I guess in this situation, you wouldn't really feel that way, but beating a 15-year-old, that's they're old enough to kind of defend themselves if they feel necessary. It is true, but another thing about the beatings, John Wayne Gacy would never hit his father back. He would, yeah. just, he would just put up his hands to, like, defend himself. This... This particular beating went on until his mother came and intervened again. And then, you know, the, the classic, uh, your sissy, your mama's boy, you're probably gay. You know, one of those. Yeah, and for those of you out there, uh, th- I don't know for certain what he said, but I could almost guarantee you. That it was not as he did nice not just as say, I just made it. You're gay. He, he did not say that, all right? Yeah. Use we're, your imagination. We're not going to say the word, but another word that starts with it that apparently came up was fruit picker. Yep. That was a, that was a term he used for it. Fruit picker. Anyway, yeah. Honestly, that's kind of a, that's like a, a, a roundabout fun way to say things. It kind of is. It's kind of it's folksy and it insulting. Is. It's like something you'd hear in like a Bob Dylan song, you know. <laughs> Maggie's Farm, it's, the fruit picker. It's yeah. It's like it, it's kind of sweet yeah, in a way. Gonna work on Maggie's Farm no more. I mean, obviously he's an aggressive man, but in a way that's kind of cute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so John Wayne Gacy, from a very young age, he exhibited a lot of health issues. All right, so he was, he was very fat. He, was, he was very overweight. He was a fat guy, and uh, he was discouraged from taking part in athletics due to a heart condition. He was sweaty. He'd eat deodorant. Deodorant. I eh? made that up completely. That's some shoe but... nice shit. But anyway, so around the time that he was in fourth grade, however, uh, the real medical issues began. He began having blackouts more and more frequently, like really often, uh, often resulting in hospitalization. And at the age of 15, he was hospitalized for a burst appendix. He was going through the fucking medical ringer. Yeah, that's... Okay. Ooh. We have blackouts. That's kind of like Jeffrey Dahmer style, but at least he had the excuse of alcohol. Well, Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah, he was just fucking blitzed all day. Like, he had a pretty valid excuse. He was blitzed on Schlitz. But, uh, yeah, so his hospitalization was often frequently... It, it was so frequent throughout his youth uh, that uh, that schooling became like an issue right so he, because of all the hospitalizations he missed probably like a full year of school predictably resulting in declining grades okay yeah sounds about right and his father never once showed sympathy more often than not uh going so far as to openly mock him for his ailments and accuse him of faking it for the sake of sympathy and attention all while continuously calling him queer and a fruit picker like we like we talked about there were instances that Gacy recalled where he was actually in a hospital bed after procedures and his father was berating him with accusations of faking it. 
You know, I, yeah, I'm sure, I, I don't really have words to say anything. I'm sure that this kind of happened a lot. Uh, I mean, I guarantee you it still happens today, but... Probably to some degree. Isn't that awful? That's the thing that I don't think people understand in these instances. Um, it's constant. It happens repeatedly, and it's kind of the perfect storm of things that create these people, you know? I mean, you got to think, this happens probably pretty regularly to a lot of people. And in most people, I would say it leads to things like addiction, uh, health issues, mental health issues. General spiraling out. Yeah, um, but when you're in this perfect incubation chamber of just violence and anger and terrible emotion, you get bad people. You don't get good people. It is true. But, you know, there was, like, the side of his family. Because, like, the rest of the family and the few friends that he did have, like, they never doubted his ailments. But yeah. also, it, the kind of split in the middle between these two polarized uh, opinions here, his conditions were never definitively diagnosed. So these so, might actually be fake. We it's, don't want to agree Well, his appendix father. did burst, and he, he was having seizures, he was blacking out, all these crazy things, but no one could figure out what the fuck was happening. It probably... You know, hear me out. I'm no doctor or expert on any of this. It probably is because he was a 15-year-old kid that was being abused and raped and didn't really have any other option but to continue being abused and raped. No, he's faking it. I'm not saying I'm a doctor. Faker. All I'm saying is that that, that might be... That might be the white bulb for you guys out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it might have been... <laughs> All right, well, at school, uh, Gacy, when he was in school, not in the hospital, at school, Gacy was the assistant to the truancy officer, and he would off, often uh, volunteer to run errands for teachers. No! So he was a bit of a fucking dork. In, in the words of Homer Simpson, he was a nerd. Anyway, uh, outside of school, at the age of 18, he became an assistant precinct captain for the Democratic candidate of his neighborhood. Yep. So he was getting involved in politics real early on. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he had the personality for it. Uh, he kind of learned... He did. He was like he was very charismatic despite all the like trials and tribulations. He learned, and this is what you'll kind of learn that... You know, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying I don't know who's listening right now, but I'm sure that there's people in your life that you know that have been through uh, tough times, you know, whether it be physical or emotional, not necessarily to this degree, but you kind of learn to pick up that schmoozy ability, you know? Yeah, they thrive in certain situations. They're very smooth talking because they've been in the shithole and they kind of know how to work their way out of it. Yeah. So th it, that's kind of how John Wayne Gacy was. He was very personable. People liked him. I mean, he was a fucking clown later, for Christ's yeah. sakes. And I mean, yeah, he used this ability to get these opportunities. I mean, working for the Democratic Party, like... Yeah. And when he was 18, that's fucking nuts. But needless to say, he was attracted to uh, those in power positions. And he got close to them through services uh, in any way possible, really. Oh, yeah. As we could see. See, but, I'm uh, the opposite of that. I, I fear people in power positions. <laughs> we got to get everyone out of here. And I don't mean fear in the sense of, like, just, like, whatever they say goes. It's more like, I just try to not have them around. No, yeah. Even when they're nice people, like, if it's, like, your boss or something, you might like them. It's, like, you just don't particularly want to be around because it's, like... I really don't want to interact with anyone if I'm not, like, seeking it out. Yeah, because it's, like... I don't want to, like, run into an old friend and, like, hey, it's, like... Oh. Yeah, it's like, I already got what I got going Hi. for me. I don't want to add more things, you know? I had plans to not do anything, and I really can't break that. That is the worst. Like, when, you, when you're when you busy, and you're like, oh, I'm going to go home. It's all, For me, it's always the same. It's like, I'm going to go home, have a nice cold beverage, and play some video games. And something always gets in the way of that. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, my. It's so yeah, infuriating. Yeah, we haven't fucking gamed in, like, three weeks. I know. I, we need to play video games together. I have barely... I really haven't played at all. I played a little bit Monday after work, and then I was so tired I went to bed. And I really haven't played anything since. You, you're, you're despicable. Well, uh, perhaps perhaps it was uh, the acceptance of these people in higher powers, uh, you know, positions that he was after, because he wasn't receiving it from his father. 
Perhaps, maybe? That could, yeah. yeah maybe that, makes that sense. could have happened. But despite his uh, father's flagrant abuse on the family, and especially to his son, he, brought, he bought John Wayne Gacy a car at the age of 18. Oh, he's a mechanic, you know. Yeah, you know, he's got he access to cars. Uh, he would often confiscate the keys, however, if John didn't do what he was told, which was pretty fucking often because his dad was kind of a dick. Yeah, it was probably like very minuscule things. It's like, alphabetize the soup. It's like, but dad, they're all Campbell's. He's like, yeah, but they're all a little bit different. Like, this isn't it. even alphabet soup. Alphabetize. <laughs> Get all the Campbell's in there. Campbell's chunky first. Oh, my God. But uh, So eventually, John had an extra set of keys made uh, for the car behind his father's back, and to which his father responded uh, in removing the car's distributor cap. I'm sure that's important, because I don't know what that is, but it sounds important. Yeah, we'd need Georgie for that it one. Sounds like it would distribute the things you might need to make the car work. He'd, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Wait, wait hold on. What was it called? Distributor's cap? Distributor cap. Okay. Not like the cap of distributors. Yeah, I'm going to look that up because I, I do. I just want to know. Um, distribute. That's a V. You can keep going. Dis- I'll, I'll v- chime v- in. V- but anyway, so after three days of uh, you know the distributor cap being off, his father put it back. All right? So it was fine. It was a little punishment, a little grounding. Uh, but John was reaching a breaking point in his frustrations. Within an hour, within not an hour, but within hours of the distributor cap being put back onto his car, John Wayne Gacy decided to drop out of high school, take the car his father had given him, and drive to Las Vegas, the party city. Did you find the, the cap, the distributor cap? Yes, the distributor cap is the cover that protects the distributor's internal parts and holds the contacts between internal rotor and the spark plug wires. You see, that sounds important. Again, I know that... Sounds like you need that. There's people out there that are probably, like, rampaging at their whatever device you're on right now. Um, We don't know cars, and I I would actually call Georgie and ask, but... I mean, the guy's having a kid. And, He's having uh, a kid very soon. I'm He's not trying to bother stressed. him right now, you know? Yeah. But we, we figured it out. It's an important piece. It's a, it's a piece it's of the It's an important puzzle. piece, but he got it back from his dad three days later, and then he, he drove out to fucking Las Vegas. So good thing he had that distributor cap. That's a far-ass ride. Yeah, dude. That's a, like at least two days if you're going like nine, ten hours a day. Two? I, no, I bet you about four. I don't know time and distance. I think it's, it's about... From Chicago, it's about probably about four thousand miles, I think. All right. Maybe well, probably well, a little bit less because I think California is like four thousand. Something happened. He drove a long ass way. Yeah, in your this car. Right? It's it's gonna be a long ass ride, and it's probably yeah. not gonna be a great one until you hit Colorado, and then after that, it's gonna get boring again. Yeah, it's just gonna be a lot of flat land. But <clears throat> yeah, all right. So he got uh, he got to Las Vegas, and he found work in the ambulance service. Uh, before being transferred to Palm Mortuary, where he worked as an attendant. Okay. Okay. So by day, he would assist the mortician in the embalming process of bodies and all that stuff. And by night, he would sleep on a cot in the back room of the embalming area. Ooh, So he was gross. just in a basement all the time. He was just... Con- he. It seems like he never went outside. The way it's it's been described. I mean, let's face it. He probably didn't. This guy, uh, the outside was probably his enemy. And there's uh, there's plenty of people that are that way. I wouldn't say the outside's my enemy. We just don't really get along. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'll go out there, but I'm not really going to no, do be, anything. Yeah, kind of same. I'll look at things. You know, I'll go check stuff out. and like, oh, this is nice. I'll go places. Like, oh, I'll go places. We're going to go down this trail? Okay, that'll be nice, but I'm not going to like fucking hang out there and be like, we're going to do this. We're going to be out here for 18 hours. I'm like, yeah, I want to go home. Yeah, most of the time when I leave the house, um, it's just a journey to come back home. Yeah, it's never a much. journey to get somewhere else. That is the best part of leaving the house is like, I can't Sometimes. wait to go home. <laughs> Eventually, I get to come back here. But anyway, uh, so he did this for roughly like three months. He was just helping out embalming, and then he was sleeping next to the embalmed. All right, so this was where Gacy's first incident with the macabre occurs. All right. Uh, one night, while cleaning up the embalming room after a long day of work, Gacy noticed the body of a young, nude teenage boy on one of the embalming tables. So Gacy decided to get up onto the table with the body 
and he began cradling and caressing it. Okay. Um, so where did that come from? That. Why did he do that? Why did why did he do that? I have a theory. I have a theory, and again, I am no therapist, but I have a theory just based on other things that I'm aware of. Let's rewind a bit. He is a physically and emotionally abused homosexual person that is not really allowed to be homosexual because of his upbringing and the way, you know, his father... It's essentially his father has made sure that he knows that it's wrong. Um, and to him, he believes him. He believes that because he has no other way to believe anything. Yeah, despite how fucking awful he is, uh, Gacy loved his father. Mm-hmm. So at this point, it's not like he, even though he's gone from his father's clutches, he's not going to go out and peruse, you know, for men to either, you know, I'll say date to be nice, but to, really. To maybe court? To he's courting men. Fuck them, to get shit put in his ass or put in their ass or their mouths or Hands or whatever he's into. I don't know. Oh, you mean sex? Yeah, he's going to do yeah. stuff like that. Um, You know, and to him, this is something that he can't do. And realistically, I mean, even, I mean, at that time, I understand that it was even less accepted. But looking back on it nowadays, it's like, well, dude, just love who you want to love and fuck who you want to fuck. I, I, nobody's going to tell you not to, okay? That's my thing. They yeah. might try to, but what are they going to do about it? Unless it's dead, like this. Yeah, and yeah. the way I see it is that, okay, so this body, um, does, does this make sense to you? Let's hear this. Um, all Knowing all the information we have, this is his way to kind of express himself in not even necessarily a sexual way, but in an emotional way to kind of caress and cuddle and, you know, explore the body of another human. No, it is interesting. Yeah, because this was, like, an account that he brought to the table. Like, he said that he did this, and there were no cameras. There was no one else around. Right. So he said that the extent of it was he cradled and caressed it. Mm-hmm. But it's like what he could have done something else based on what he, had, like, went on to do afterward in the following years. But he kept it to that. And it it wasn't really known how long he did he like did this it, like no one knows how long this occurrence lasted, but apparently almost immediately afterward, Casey was in a state of shock. Mm-hmm. Like he was shocked at what he had just done. He was like freaking out. See that even to me, I mean, this is just a personal thing that it proves my idea further because it's not necessarily a sexual thing. It's a it's an emotional thing. I mean, humans, you can say whatever you want to say. Humans just want to be appreciated and loved. That is what you want. No, it is true, and that's probably the most intimate he's ever been with a person up until this point. That's a great way to put it. Like anybody. That's what he needed. He craved intimacy. Yeah. And this, I mean, in his mind, in the mind of an abused person, this is the only way to obtain that. So he strikes while the iron's hot. He did it. He did it. I don't necessarily think that, you know, he got the job to do this. No, he I think just, it's he a byproduct. Tra- yeah, I think he was just getting away from his father. I mean, he didn't even start in the mortuary. He was like, yeah, I'm going to be an ambulance guy. But then he just got moved there by happenstance. Right, 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 right. But uh, like I said, he, he was in shock almost immediately afterward. And the very next day, he got on the phone with his mom and he asked if he could return home. Damn, so right. that was obviously... Very, if he's going to he, go back... Yeah, he ran away from home, cradled a dead child nude boy, and then was so freaked out that he was like, Mom, uh, can I can I come back? And it took his father some convincing to let him come back, but he eventually agreed. See, and that's... Again, this is something that people don't... It's almost kind of creepy to me. I've been thinking about this this whole time. It's scary how, in a way, he... Talent, uh, he He mirrors a talentless Michael Jackson. Um, What do you mean? (laughs) Just because of the boys? uh, Well, no, a similar upbringing and kind of the way that in his mind he was just beaten into this person that he really wasn't supposed to be. And, I mean, not only is it sad, but it's kind of the thing that people don't understand, especially in both of these cases, when it comes to this... um, this situation, and I mean, you could even say that about Michael Jackson, 
the idea that it was, you know, a little boy is it, it's because they never got to experience that growth that comes with puberty. Yeah. They were forced into essentially being beaten like an adult and treated like an adult from the first time that they could remember. Four years old, yeah. So they, they don't really get to grow out of that phase because they never got to live in it. Yeah. It's the same way... You I know, mean, fuck, dude. Michael Jackson had, like, a hit record at the age of five. No, exactly. And it's it's the same way, comparatively, is if you weren't allowed to, let's say, I don't know, play with toys. Let's say you're a toy person. If you were absolutely not allowed to play with toys, when you're old enough to make your own decisions, you're probably going to play with toys because you it, it's just something you weren't allowed to do. Yeah, no, that's true. It's the same way that people, especially the more sheltered people out there, they tend to get a little bit crazier because of that. Um, they, they just never got to experience life on their own terms. And when they do, it... it goes too far yeah it's like the the very much extreme version of like a sheltered kid going off to college and like getting blackout drunk every day yeah no exactly like but it's with childhood and gross crazy stuff but anyway so he went back home all right he went back home and uh once he was home gacy somehow without a high school diploma, managed to get into Northwestern Business College. That's that impressive. Crazy? That's fucking nuts. But he graduated uh, from the college in 1963 and became a management trainee at Nunbush Shoe Company. Nunbush Shoe. Nunbush Shoe Company. Nunbush. Nunbush. The Just forbidden like his bush. victims. So, uh, it, this was a job that in 1964, just a year later, transferred him to Springfield, Illinois, where he worked his way up from salesman to manager of the sales department. Nice. So he is just shooting right up in the, in the totem. There's that schmoozy mentality, you know, it works. Yeah. Grease yeah. the palms, grease the wheels, yeah. and you go places. And his schmoozing wasn't limited to just professional stuff, right? So he began a courtship with a young woman. And a co-worker Ooh. named Marilyn Monroe. Uh, that would be insane. <laughs> Wouldn't that be just a crazy like wrench in this fucking story? That would be a twist. Wow. A major twist. Or, it's either Marilyn or Merlene. Merlin. It's some with an M. It's it, M. 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 Myers. Uh, they were getting engaged that same year. All right. And he also joined the local JCs, which was a leadership training and organization group. All right. Interesting. It was apparently while in the JCs that uh, Gacy had an, had yet another homosexual experience. Okay. So he I saw s- a picture I say, of you know, Mario Lopez. Oh my God. And he just couldn't contain himself. The most attractive man in the world. But no, I say another homosexual experience because it's like. I don't know whether to categorize the thing with the body as a homosexual thing, but also I'm not sure if like the molestation when he was young could be considered a homosexual thing, so I just threw that in there when it came to wording. I'll, I'll tell you this. Just I, as like a I definitely catch-all. would not... I wouldn't count the, the molestation. The, molest, the molestation? The molestation? I would not count that only because it's like, well, he didn't have a choice in that in That, that is matter. true. Um... And as far as the boy, I mean that that's a good question because if if you but it seemed like a ho- like wholesome compared to what it could have been. Yeah, you and, know what I mean. And, and, it's and, like, and that's at least if we're taking his word for that being all that happened. Right. If you're to take it at face value at what he said, which is really the only answer we're ever going to get because the other party was dead and can't answer. Uh, was it truly homosexual? I'd probably say no because there, there there's no. There's no anything. And even at that point, now this is a rhetorical, philosophical question. If Can anything actually be heterosexual or homosexual if before that it's necrophilia? I feel like it can't. I feel like it, necrophilia is its own category. 
Mm. It's like... Um, How do these things it, <laughs> interact with one see, another? See, hear, hear me out here, okay? Hear me out. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's I'm like, all ears. It's like bestiality. If you have sex with a female animal, you're not like, yeah, I'm a heterosexual bestiality guy. You're just into fucking animals. If you have sex with a male animal, you're not like, yeah, I'm a gay bestiality person. No, no, no. You're just a fucking bestiality guy. Yeah, they don't really split that hair. So with dead people, I feel like it's also... I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, they're <laughs> dead. You choose, but it's like... They're dead, so you're you're just a necrophiliac before anything. Yeah, I just thought of a crazy bestiality joke. The split in the hair, it's like fucking a rabbit. Yeah, well, but, but, yeah, yeah, sort of. But it whatever it, it whatever the case is... He was in the JCs, and this is where I think we've agreed on his first homosexual experience occurred. All right. So a fellow JCs member apparently invited Gacy to a night of drinking and television on his couch. Sounds nice. That sounds like what it I sounds do. Sounds what we like what we do all the time. But during this, uh, the fellow JCs member performed oral sex on Gacy once he was good and drunk. Yeah, we, uh, we, we don't, don't do this. Not that we can remember. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, there's always room for error, I guess, but that's not something I've ever done with... It's a dangerous thing, drinking. It's not something I've ever done with, uh... Yeah, no. no it's not, no. No. No, no, no. Anyway, so this didn't uh, stop Gacy from marrying Mary Lynn. I think it's Mary Lynn. It's it's a- M-A-R-I-L-Y-N-N. Yeah, like Marilyn or Mary it's Lynn. Marilyn. It could be both. Yeah, the two N's throws me. Yeah, no, I get that for sure. Anyway, he married her uh, in September of 1964. So, and with his marriage, uh, Gacy received from Marilyn's father three KFC restaurants. Sweet. <laughs> in Waterloo, Iowa. Sweet. He's like, here's a wedding gift. Here's three <laughs> fucking KFC franchises. Super, super off topic here. KFC has gotten so much better lately. I don't know what they're doing differently, but they... I've always been a Popeye's guy. Always, my whole life, I would prefer Popeye's to KFC. It has shifted. It has truly shifted. Wow. KFC, if you haven't recently, give it a go. They, they have really done some good work out there. I don't know what the colonel did, but they, they did it right. Is it crisp? Is it taste? Is it juice? I'll tell you my problem, okay? I had this conversation today on the way to work, actually. Yeah, you've been heated about KFC. And I used to... I, not Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it. But I'm not sure if it was something about the breading or how they cooked it. If it was... Maybe it was, like, overcooked. It was, was too it extra crunchy. crispy? Extra crispy, no, I bet. No, just the plain old, like, regular-style chicken. It was good. It had crunch to it. It was good. But there was something about it that left, like, a funky taste. And I'd often get a scratchy throat from it. Mm. It never stopped me from eating it because it was good. But now, I've had it twice in the last maybe, like, six weeks. And it it's good. It holds up. I, well, that's fantastic news. I'm choosing it over KFC or uh, Popeye's. <laughs> KFC over Popeye's is the new thing for the month of July of 2021. Well, Gacy will be just elated. Yeah. I don't know about his. I mean, I don't know what he was doing there, but the ones that I've been to, top notch. They're doing well. For sure. I promise. Yeah. Cool. Hell yeah. Maybe I'll get some of that after this. But, uh, yeah, so Gacy uh, was gifted three KFC restaurants in Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, Waterloo! Isn't it crazy? And uh, so Gacy and his new bride went and uh, and they moved to Waterloo, uh, moving into the parents' old home that was now vacated for them to be a family. You know they listened to that ABBA song, that like they Waterloo. had Waterloo. It's a great song. Something and then you say Waterloo or something. It's like yeah, something, Waterloo twice maybe. Something and you won the war. I don't. It's something about the war. There's I don't war know. in there. Yeah, it's about the Battle of Waterloo. Man, fuck that. Uh, but uh, so they moved into the parents' house in Waterloo to manage these KFC restaurants, and KFC. they had more than a comfortable living. Okay, so Gacy, after like while managing these three restaurants, was making fifteen thousand dollars a year, which is roughly a hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars in today's money. Damn, that's good living. That's good living. And it was in this new setting and comfortable financial situation that Gacy became, uh, well, he began becoming the truly frightening figure he would later be known 
as. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not in a good way, but oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, that's right. So, much like with uh, most fast food restaurants, Gacy employed a large number of teenagers, both male and female. Bad news. Bad news. There's teenagers everywhere. However, uh, Gacy openly favored and engaged extracurricularly with the males. Solely the males. Ooh. Yeah, he left the girls out in the dust. So, in Gacy's new home, he turned the basement into a sort of like a lounge area for his male co-workers. Or, you know, his underlings. Mm-hmm. Uh, where they would often drink and play pool. So these were teenagers against the law. Not pool, but drinking. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So, uh, it was at these gatherings that Gacy began to make uh, sexual advances on the young men after they'd all gotten good and drunk, only to claim that these advances were tests of mor- morals, you know, like morale, morals, workplace environment, or that he was simply goofing on them, you know, it was just a goof. But that was only if uh, the young men did not reciprocate his advances. Has that excuse ever actually worked? Ever? He's like, this is a test. <laughs> no, you don't. Th- this is not a test. You don't test me by grabbing my inner thigh. Yeah, no. Boss. Th- no, dude, <laughs> like, no. This isn't, that's not, no. Anyway, so uh, that, that wasn't the only sexual activity going on in the house, however, because Gacy's wife, Marilyn, gave birth to a son. In February of 1966. Nice. And a daughter. Congratulations, guys. Congrats. I know. But also a daughter in March of 67. So he was oh. just, they were just cranking them out. Irish twins, huh? There you go. Uh, this sparked a very unanticipated shift in Gacy's relationship with his own father. All right? After Ooh. the birth of his children, Gacy's parents came to visit the family, and his father then privately took him aside and apologized for the life of abuse he'd put him through. Ending wow. in a firm handshake and an admission that he was wrong about him. Wow. Isn't see, that crazy? That's that's big. But Dude, Gacy should have just shot himself right there. I feel that would have like been the perfect life for him. This is a, a, another pivotal moment because I think this is when, the, so to speak, the beast was unleashed. Uh, before this, it was kind of, his cards were kept really close to his chest because, you know, you couldn't come out as this. But now that he, his dad had admitted guilt, it's like all bets are off now. Like He's it's like, over. Oh shit! It's over. It's it, like the battle has been won, and it is time to celebrate. No, you're very, you're very correct. Gacy later went on to describe this period of his life as quote perfect. Yeah, perfect could, life for Mister Gacy. I could see said. that for sure. Yeah. So though things like you said. Uh, were not as wholesome as they appeared on the surface. Okay, jo- uh, Gacy joined the Waterloo chapter of the JCs and would attend meetings after his 14-hour days managing his three uh, KFCs there, often bringing chicken. Okay, cool. He brought chicken to the meetings. He was the, the big guy on campus. He actually insisted that everybody call him the colonel. The John Connor meetings? Oh my! That's what I like. I feel Against like he, Skynet. He was a fan of the Terminator before James Cameron actually made the Terminator, <laughs> and they started a fan club like in the in the sixties and seventies. You know, just to get ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. So he was uh, held in high regard amongst the fellow JCs, and eventually served on the board of directors, right? Which was rife with such activities as wife swapping, yeah, drug use, prostitution. Etc. They watched a lot of porn also. They just would watch porn together. See, now that porn is so accessible, the idea of watching it with somebody that isn't your significant other is very weird to me. It's like you could even do it and just not tell anyone. Just have it on your phone. You're just in the corner with your knees up. Yeah, just like, so no what do you sees. watch? YouTube. <laughs> video. Go away. Don't worry about it. Go away. This is a video. Go away, please. It's like, you go get that. No. Can't stand up. Come back and rub my forehead. <laughs> give, give me some freezer peas. I need some swelling to go down. Anyway, uh, yeah, what am I? What am I looking at here? So yeah, uh, so he was a scummy guy, amongst other scummy guys. Nothing, nothing too bad shit about that. Okay, nothing too crazy. But Casey then took his methods from the basement parties to the next level. Let's turn it up a notch. <laughs> Rip the knob off. 
Uh, so, in August of 1967, Gacy invited a fellow JC's member's son, Donald Voorhees, to watch a stag movie at his house. He was nice. Like, this is a straight stag movie. It's a man and a woman. That was the that was the proposal. So, uh, Donald was 15 years old at the time. Once there, Gacy continuously fed him drinks and kept his promise of allowing him to watch the movie. However, uh, at a certain point, the two were talking about sex. You know, it's bound to come up. You're watching a sex movie and you're drinking. Watching some steamy entertainment. You know, it's going to come out. It's going to happen. There you go. Uh, apparently, at one point, Gacy casually slipped in uh, the lie that one has to have sex with a man before having sex with a woman. This was the thing he was presenting as fact to this young man. Okay. So. You know, I want to point something out before we go any further. Did you notice that throughout all of this, he never once used a roofie? Never once. And Bill Cosby is out of jail. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say about that. What's uh, what's the point you're trying to make? I mean, they're both rapists. Oh, they're both terrible people. They're both raping. He never uh, used a roofie. And the guy who used a, a literal, he drugged someone to do this. I don't think it matters how you get to the rape. It's the fact that rape is at the end. No, no, but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about that one of them got out of prison. You know what I'm saying? You are right. You are right. Like, full-blown, just like, you're good to go, Bill. Well, Gacy was fat, but he wasn't Fat Albert. Yeah, he wasn't you like... You know, he, he, was, he wasn't Lil' Bill. He, he didn't wasn't... have that charm, that nonsensical charm of just gibberish. To... He didn't have that. He didn't yeah. have that going for him. I hope he gets bisected by a train. But, uh, what, what am I looking at here? So, uh, he was like, yeah, you gotta have sex with a guy... Before you, you can have sex with a woman, that's the rules, is what Gacy said to Donald Voorhees. Them's the rules. Them's the rules, is what he says. So then he convinced the 15-year-old Donald to engage in mutual oral sex, which I believe is just 69ing with a man. Yeah. Or, 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 hear me out or, here. Or, 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 oral, hear me out here. They just swap. You know, you just take turns. Because I feel like... It is nice to take turns. I feel like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong out there. I've never personally 69 with another man. And I, I am interested in this. I feel like if you're not into testicles that way, the idea of a 69 with two men, the, the balls would get in the way. You know, and if that's not your like cup you could, of tea. You could, like, both lay on your side. Oh, okay. You okay, You know, that's so true. it's just kind of like a one-eyes um uh, issue okay no that's a good time, point but that's it's a good both point. of your one eyes you i know? respect that okay i'm just curious. I'm just that's curious. how i would solve the problem should i be in that situation i mean obviously you know if that if you're into that if that's something that you're into it's like well then it's no problem then you know disregard what i'm saying but if it's not something you're interested and attracted to i feel like that could be an issue you know yeah yeah no i get you well donald Voorhees was the first person that he did this with but uh, it, it was it was not the last. Okay, this was it was not the only time that this occurred. Nor was it the only means of persuasion. Okay, so Gacy went on the following months to abuse several more young boys, often tricking them into believing that he was commissioned to do, conduct sexual experiments for scientific research, paying the boys to uh, th that heard this excuse fifty dollars for their silence. Damn. This guy means, like, he really means business. He's just creating lies. But they're all very, like, well-spun. It's very it's very dangerous. It's very yeah, gross. They're not outlandish lies. They're not crazy things. It, well, in a sense, they are, but they're very tame. It's just like, oh, well, you know, this is what's going to have to happen. And it's like, oh, well. Not as very true. Okay, I guess. Like, he, all right, let's do it then. Yeah, he was gross. But this came to a head uh, in March. Of, Ironic. Yeah, I know. I When I typed came to a head, I'm like, I kind of have to leave that in. It's kind of funny. But it uh, came to a head in March of 1968 when Donald Voorhees told his father what Gacy had done to him. Okay, so Ooh, Not good. Yeah, Voorhees Sr., that was, that was his name. So he immediately called the police on Gacy, and Gacy was arrested. Gacy denied the charges up and down and demanded that he take, and demanded to be allowed to take a polygraph test, which he thoroughly failed. 
it showed Damn. that he was very nervous when they when they were asking the questions specifically about. Well, at least that uh, shows Donald that he, part of him's human. I guess part of him is human. Like he <laughs> we want, can take solace in that. Yeah. He's got two <laughs> human things, right? He wants you know physical touch from a human being, and he sh- has stress. So those are two very emo- human things. <laughs> Good for him. That I got in a way, I got to give him some credit because not all not all true crime cases share those two things. You know, it is true. Yeah, but he failed the polygraph test, and uh, despite this, uh, Gacy went on to claim that these accusations were politically motivated because uh, Voorhees Senior opposed Gacy's nomination to be president of the JCs. Uh, so this little, you know, he's got another another excuse yeah. web of lies. Yeah, there you go. And many of his fellow JCs thought this to be a credible and actual, like you know, excuse. They were just like, that makes fucking sense, and they rallied behind him during yeah. this whole thing. Do you ever think? Do you ever just sit back and think, what if, what if, John Wayne Gacy was telling the truth and all of this was a lie, and then what we know is just complete fabrication. Obviously, that's not the case, but no, just what if? No, it's not, but, just, you know... Just ride with me on that. What if? You I know? mean, what if? That would that would be the crime, wouldn't it? That would be it? so sad. <laughs> like, that would be that would ridiculously be sad. so awful. Obviously, that's not the case. I'm just, you know... I don't a, think we're ever going to discover any new information that makes him into, like, a martyr. Yeah, and... <laughs> like, yeah. You know? No, it's, it's open and shut now. It's yeah. done. Yeah. So despite all these excuses, all these people rallying behind him in the JCs, uh, despite this case, he was indicted on the sodomy charge. Mm-hmm. Okay, so on August 30th of 1968, Gacy was convicted... One, uh, one, yeah, wait. He convinced... He didn't get convicted. Gacy convinced one of his employees at the KFC location, uh, Mr. Russell Schroeder, He was 18 years old to physically assault Donald Voorhees in an attempt to discourage him from testifying. Uh, He offered Russell $300 for this service. Mm, Okay. Low ball offer. So, like, he's doing, like, small time hits. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, what's less than, like, a hit man? It's just like a a hurt man? Uh, I don't uh, know. The muscle man. Yeah, Uh, that's uh, like. He's the the, the goon. The card shark. He's the the card shark. He's a goon, man. I like goon. I'm yeah, he's a goon. goon. But, uh, we'll keep it there. He's, he's yeah. a goon. He hired a goon. So Schroeder the goon, he agreed, and he lured Voorhees into a secluded park at night where he sprayed mace into Donald's eyes. Holy shit. Right? And then he beat him badly. He beat the fuck out of this guy. Damn. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Voorhees uh, escaped, however, and he immediately went to the police, who then arrested Schroeder. And, well, that backfired. Yeah, it just it just was all in one night. Uh, so he denied the charges at first, but quickly uh, gave in to admit that he was guilty, along with the fact that Gacy had hired him to carry out the act. God, that does not okay, look good so for you. Everything just falls apart. Everything, it's all falling apart. It was after this that Gacy was ordered to undergo an extensive psychiatric evaluation at the University of Iowa's Psychiatric Hospital. All right. And after 17 days of evaluation... His two doctors agreed that he was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, uh, pretty like sociopathy, psychopathy, mm-hmm. psychopathy. Is it psychopathy or psychopathy? I kind of like, I I like psychopathy. Yeah, that's that's the way I've always heard it. There you go. But the doctors noted that there were there was like no clear treatment for this guy. He was basically always going to be an outcast. He was going to be in and out of jail his entire life. There was no treatment for this ailment, and uh. But also, he was competent to stand trial. Ooh, that is not what you want to hear. Isn't that in his just shoes. not a good thing for Gase? Not what you want to hear when you're in that Gacy, sticky situation. You know what I mean? So, on November seventh of nineteen sixty-eight, Gacy pled guilty to the sodomy charge in relation to Voorhees. Isn't uh, that a damn shame? I mean, okay, let that's me, not a let, damn. No, 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 no. Let me rewind. <laughs> that's I'm, a good thing. I'm thinking in my head of something that I haven't said out loud yet. So let me. <laughs> You, let me rephrase you really that. Need to, to let these things fly yeah, out of your mouth first. Yeah, let me rephrase first. that. Okay, it was it was an underage boy. Strike one, two, and three, possibly even four. But the idea that it's just a charge of like you've been accused of sodomy. If this wasn't an underage boy and it was in a willing situation, 
and the fact that they could still charge you for sodomy, that's just fucked up. But in this way, it worked out well because, you know, he raped a young man. So that's the fantastic news uh, that he was arrested. Yeah, yeah but and convicted. It, just the idea that the charge of sodomy existed in the not very far away past is kind of crazy. 68, yeah. Like, bro, just, I don't get it. I don't. Get, that's a topic for another day. I don't get it. Just let people fucking do what they want to do. We'll talk about sodomy. Without but, rape, obviously. Yeah, no rape. That, that doesn't count. Rape's bad. If you didn't know that, it's not good. But he was convicted on December 3rd of that same year and was sentenced to serve out 10 years in Anamasa, Anamosa, Anamosa. Anamosa prison. Oh, wow. State penitentiary. So, <laughs> so as one could imagine, uh, Gacy's wife filed for divorce and took the house and assets and sole custody of the children. So they were gone. Good for her. Good for her. That's very good. Uh, so while in prison, Gacy became a model prisoner almost immediately. He took a job at the mess hall and he joined the inmate JC's chapter. Apparently they're in the prisons. What the fuck are these people? <laughs> they're, they're public organizers and leadership uh, people. That's a I guess. F- holy <laughs> shit! Like they're dude, everywhere. They're, they're in the prison, and they had fifty members. Gacy joined them, and he like recruited six hundred fucking inmates. It Damn. went from fifty to six fifty in a in a year and a half. Damn, and, loser! <laughs> right. So he also secured raises for the inmates working in the mess hall. And he even oversaw the installation of a mini golf course in the prison's, like, w- rec yard. That seems Isn't so that unnecessary. <laughs> Why are we giving prisoners clubs? Why do they? I mean, <laughs> you're in prison for, you know, I'm not a bad person. I'm not an evil soul, but it's like you're in prison. Maybe mini golf shouldn't be something that you just get to do. No, I don't think so at all. I don't get to just do mini golf whenever I want. I gotta pay you to go do that. Yeah, I don't just have one. Like th- that means prisoners would be able to play mini golf every fucking day. Yeah, for free and See, eat like for free. The idea and of get like paid to do a job where they give people food for free. The idea of basketball, soccer, working out, things like that. You can all do those for free. So it's like, yeah, you can let. Why wouldn't we let prisoners do that? You know, you can play basketball for free. You get basketball. What's fucking, I don't know, you spent $5 at like a Walmart, boom, you're playing basketball. Mini golf is a whole different bird, okay? That's like, yeah, we have a, a knitting competition in prison. It's like, yeah, we shouldn't be doing that. Like, that, that's a lot of <laughs> things that they don't need to do. needles, there's thread, hanging, stabbing. Who's giving stabbings. them the products? You know, it's like, no, no, no. Where's all this coming from? Anyway, he put in a mini golf course in the prison yard. Fucking crazy. He also took, like, 16 high school courses, resulting in, in him finally receiving a diploma. Nice. Even after he graduated business school and became wildly successful. The high school equivalency. Yeah. So, uh, despite all of this, however, Gacy was refused parole during his first few hearings and was even denied leave to attend his father's funeral. Well, because, yeah, he raped a young man. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, his father died of cirrhosis of the liver Ooh. from all the drinking. Yep. On Christmas of 1969, and Gacy, upon hearing this news, broke down crying. Uh. So that's good. And he wasn't allowed to go to the, the, the funeral. But, you want to hear some crazy shit? On June 18th of 1970, John Wayne Gacy was given parole with 12 months probation. He was in prison for 18 months of his 10-year sentence. Yeah, that happens more often than you that's want That's so to. fucked. And he was, uh, he, you know, all right, so 12 months probation. He was with this. He was required to move back to Chicago and live with his mother. And he was to observe a 10 a.m. curfew. Nice. All right. And you know what? That's where we're going to fucking end the episode today because there's so much more to get through. And I feel like that's a natural stopping point. No, it is because there is, I mean, there's so, we're literally. Barely, I don't even. I wouldn't even say we're halfway done. We're not about even. No, a this quarter is just, of the way through the Gacy story. This is just a good example of how badly he fucks up and how like reckless he is, and how easily he seems to get out of things. Even and, if he gets caught and convicted, he's out in eighteen months, and he gets like people think he's awesome. They're just like he gave us mini golf. He gave us raises. 
And he graduated high school. That's the case in a lot of these. I mean, again, you know, when you we talk true crime, it's hard to deny that a lot of these stories kind of line up in many different ways because they all share similar traits where they are just extremely lucky individuals. Granted, that luck runs out eventually, but for a good portion of their life, they, they are just, just keep going. They are just constantly hitting stride. Like they are just boom, boom, boom. It goes exactly the way they need it to go. That's like oh, a snag. Let's keep going. That's just the way it is for them. And Gacy is no different. For a while, a obviously, while. he got snagged, and then he's out. And I mean, yeah, he does get snagged again. I mean, we know that. Yeah. Yeah. But there's but a how lot do we of get life. There? There's how... a lot of life to live in between yeah. these two convictions. It's very true and it's very sick and we're going to cover it and it's going to be fun. You're going to listen, it's going to be great. We're uh we are starting a cult. That we are. That is the episode for this week. Please, please, please tune in next week. We will have part 2. Possibly, maybe the conclusion. Uh, we'll see kind of how far that's going to go. We'll probably let you know right at the, the head of the episode there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You'll know for sure. But there will be more John Wayne Gacy to come. I suspect it's going to be a three-parter, but that's just me. No, I'm, I'm yeah, that's kind of where I'm looking. We're going to, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm, uh, we will definitely be back with more chicken and sodomy talk for certain. Yeah, I might, I'm, I'm going to get some chicken after this. We love you guys very, very, very much. And uh, have yourselves a great fucking week. We will be back. It's the middle of the summer. It's great. But you can follow us on all the shit for all the updates on all of our stuff. Uh, On Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we're also on YouTube. You can subscribe. And there's Patreon below. You can go there. There's extra episodes. We do an episode every other Thursday. I think we're doing one next Uh, week. Sunday. Sunday. Next Sunday, yes. What? Uh well we, yeah we had to re you have a busy schedule yeah Thursday. yeah yeah I got that show it moved to Rensselaer it's far fuck away but it's no problem at all we'll be back next week yeah we'll for figure sure. it out we'll for gi- sure we'll give you that content it's gonna be on Patreon go down there and there's some cool stuff good community there's plenty of content anyway uh so yeah we are starting a cult that's Grand of Jake and we're gonna see you next week Mitch is gonna be here to say peace bananas. <laughs>